Hey guys, this is a quick video for some tips and tricks for, well I'm making it for the sad swept, the dead linger forum, but it's kind of applicable to anybody I guess, anybody that's doing uh, 3D models and such. So the first tip that I'm going to do is actually overpainting on the object you're going to do. So the biggest thing is if you're going to make a real world object, find reference. And I've said it before in my request topic. If you want me to make something, it's way simpler for me if you give me some uh, some reference pictures, because then I can actually figure out the shape of it. Because even for this object, it's actually a little bit more complex than what it seems like, as you can see in this picture. So as you can see, it's not a perfect circle here, so it makes it a little bit harder for later, because you have to kind of squish it, but you can't squish it too much, and like there's things like this that are going to be interesting to model but I digress so the quick overpaint thing is just to basically help yourself when you're modeling and what you don't want to do like what you want to do is you want to paint over um, mostly in straight lines because that's what polygons are um, just your basic shape so what you don't really want to do actually is like for this object I don't want to do extra lines for all these because that's just something you'll do when you do the well you can do it by all means but I wouldn't do it just because it's gonna make everything messy you wanna basically do your main parts and then go from there like I also wouldn't since I know this is this handle area is gonna be like a squash cylinder I'm not gonna go and put all the extra edges that I'm gonna need to make it a cylinder that's just it's a waste of time and it's a waste of it. Well, yeah, it's just a waste of time for you. So, you want to go and basically do your basic shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but obviously, the more time you take in it, the better it's going to turn out, more than likely. Stupid shift key. Um, so, yeah, so you block out your basic shape. Um, make it so it. It's just there so when you go to model, you kind of understand what I've said on the forums before as well, is your flow of your object. And the flow of the object is basically going to be how the actual, well, yeah, it's, it's hard to describe. It's how the actual object flows. When you look at the, the different parts of it, you're going to notice that it's got a certain way that it, it kind of is made. And how it's made is basically one of the the ways that it flows. So for this part up here, I know that I'm going to have all these extra edges coming through, so it's not a big deal. So I can always just kind of do a mock connect through because I know it's going to. I know I'm going to have lots of edges to do this with, and I can actually do more edges to make this even more round and perfect when I go to model it. Um, but yeah, it's it's just to make it so. And by the way, I would model this as two different pieces since it's technically two different pieces. It'll make things easier. And that's one thing that you should always remember when you're doing uh, even high poly or low poly. If it's a different piece, do it as a different mesh. Don't make it harder on yourself by trying to make this all in one piece and having extra edges that flow through that you don't really need to have. It's It'll save you on try. It'll save on your try count and it'll save on your time because you don't have to worry about like oh yeah, this thing has a whole extra bunch of edges that I have to clean up later because I decided to try to make it all all one mesh instead. So just as a quick little thing here, you can like do this, maybe have an extra one here. Um, and you probably have a couple here to get this piece here rounded as well. So that way they actually interconnect a bit. Um, for your high poly, you're also going to have to do some kind of like localization to get these holes and stuff like that, but that's, yeah, there's ways of doing it so you don't actually have to model this in it, but it's a little bit harder, and it's it really relies heavily on normal mapping. Um, I've linked in a couple of posts, I think it was a Puff Dadder post, um, to Racer 445's How to Bake a Flawless Normal Map. If you search that on Google, you'll find it. It's on CG Toots Plus, I believe. And he goes over what normal map is, how it bakes, and what it's good for, all that kind of stuff. And he, I guarantee he'll explain it better than I can. So 
uh, go and take a look at that if you need help on normal mapping. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my first tip is this thing. The The second tip is actually after you've done something like this and you have it all figured out how you're going to do your basic model. Um, when you're in uh, 3ds Max, like either way, just just so to be clear on this, you don't have to do this in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you could probably do it in Paint or GIMP or whatever painting program you have. It's just so you can draw. As long as you can draw on it, that's all that matters. Um, but in 3ds Max, one of the best things that I do is when I'm modeling a real-world object, as I said, I try to find um, pictures with not too much perspective distortion. And what I mean by that is, like, you can kind of see here that this isn't a perfect um, side view picture. It's got a little bit of perspective, but it's it's minor, so it's not going to be that big of a problem. Um, when you get into things, like if you were trying to model on a picture like... Uh, a picture like this or something, it would be really hard because you have a lot of perspective and you have a lot of... Yeah, it's, it's just going to be a lot harder. It's good for reference, so you can tell how thick pieces are. Like, now I know that this piece is thicker on the top and the middle. I know that it's thinner here, all that kind of stuff. But you wouldn't really want to model on something like that. But if you find pictures like this, where it's pretty rel relatively side view, top view, whatever you want to use, uh, it'll make your job easier. But sometimes you'll run into things like this, where, say, you want to take this edge and... Okay, so now I have it over top of where I think I have to do it, and you're like, uh, okay, now I've, now I've got to bring it down, and oh, okay, now it's good. Whereas you could have just done it like this. You hit Alt X, and it will turn on see-through mode for whatever object you have selected. What see-through mode does is exactly what it says. It makes it so you can see what's below it. It make it's helpful for doing a lot of stuff, especially when you're doing high poly modeling sometimes, it can be really helpful to see what the other side looks like or to make sure that you don't have like big divots in your in your model because you accidentally grabbed like a vertex all the way through to the other side, stuff like that. So the best thing to do is you turn it on and now bam, now I know exactly where I have to do it. Bring this in, and I can continue on my way, bring that the rest of the handle up etc etc um, so yeah that's the second little tip is alt x in 3ds max will make it so you can actually see through your model and it's just another toggle so if you hit, hit alt x again you'll turn it off it's pretty handy um, make sure though that if you're using it if you if you hit just x it will actually turn your gizmo off and your gizmo is like your move tool and all that kind of stuff. It'll actually turn it off so you can't see it and you can't change actually what the uh, like the direction, the axis you've got activated, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you hit X or if you if you hit Alt X a few times and then you kind of fat fingered the X button and you can't see your gizmo anymore and you're like you're changing through like rotate and trying to figure out why, where's my gizmo. It's just probably hit X. So just another side tip, I guess. Uh, my final tip for this video is actually one that I think a lot of people on the forums need to uh, need to know, for especially for if you're a 3ds Max user, it'll make your job a lot easier. So end guns are the bane of existence. I know somebody, one of the forum guardians, I can't remember who, was trying to say that end guns aren't a big problem when you put it into a game engine. It'll just make it triangles, which is true, but isn't a good idea. As I said in the post, you, you really want to make sure you don't leave a bunch of end guns in your model because you, you don't know what an engine's going to do to it. If you make sure it's all quadded or triangulated, you know exactly how it's going to look when you put it in any game engine. It's not going to just radically like flip it side, flip inside out or you're not going to get shading artifacts like... I'm uh, not sure if I can like reproduce one right now, but... Yeah, it's it's... Just don't do anything like that it's a bad idea so I was gonna use that part but then I lose a <laughs> an edge here so maybe I can do it on this one yeah I can so right now say you've been working on a model for a couple of days or hours whatever 
Sometimes you'll end up with an end gun, you don't even know it. Like right now, since I just made this one, I know it's there. But say I'm at the end of my model and I'm like, ah, oh, so I think I'm ready to start unwrapping. It's not, I just go and start unwrapping and then I realize, oh crap, I have this, this end gun. In this spot, it's not a big deal. I could just actually connect the edges and it wouldn't affect my unwrap at all. And bam, it's just, it's all done. But you can get into situations where if you do that, it'll actually really mess up your texture. Because it'll, when you do your unwrap, it's all dependent on where everything is placed and how everything is stretched perfectly. That kind of stuff. Like, well, not stretch, but you don't want stretching. But anyway, so the easiest way to check for end guns is to actually go, uh, you go to element mode and you hit, or you can hit five. It's like hotkeys to change your selection mode on po edit poly. And this is this is just the way that I do it because it's usually faster. So you select all of your stuff like that, hold control, hit polygon, and it'll keep all your polygons selected. And then you can use these nifty tools called the graphite modeling tools. And they have a thing called selection. And I know that somebody is probably going to ask, oh, well, I don't have this bar. Well, how do I get it? And it's just this button right here. It's right beside the... Uh, manage layers button and it's fourth from the mirror button so if you hit this one if you don't have that toolbar that was just here hit the graphite modeling tools button here and it'll turn on so once you have that it'll probably start on the graphite modeling itself there's a bunch of really neat stuff in these tools that can uh, really improve your workflow if you know how to use them but I'm not going to go into that this is just for finding end guns and triangles and stuff like that so with all your polygons selected you go to selection by numeric and if you go to less than four it'll find any triangles which since I have no triangles it's not highlighting anything uh, and if you do the greater than four it'll highlight anything that has more than four sides so that you're more than four edges which is an end gone so now it's found okay you have this one spot here that has more than four edges why don't you fix this up and because this is an easy fix you do that you're done so you can actually, just to prove that it won't highlight it again, highlight all my stuff, numeric, greater than four, bam, nothing selected. So that's just a, a really easy way of checking, even when you're modeling, to see if you have end guns. It doesn't have to be done at the end of your model. It doesn't have to be done anywhere specific. It's just something that every once in a while you might want to check, just to, just to check to see if you can fix something before you start adding a bunch of edges for turbo smooth and stuff like that, because that, that's when it gets really messy. You have like a bunch of extra edges in here to to make it so that your model is gonna look exactly how you want it with a turbo smooth and yeah, then you if you have like one thing in the middle that's like, oh yeah, this this edge is no longer here and it can get just it with so many edges it can really cause a problem. So it's it's way better to keep track of your end guns and eliminate them as soon as possible. Like it's really one of those things you should never have an end gun in a finished model because it's it's more than likely going to screw up when you put it into an engine. So I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this little tips and tricks video. Um, yeah, I might make some other videos later for some tips on unwrapping, um, maybe some stuff on texturing, stuff like that, like which textures do what, specular and gloss maps and all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of videos on that already, so I might just try digging up some from the internet and linking to you guys. But anyways, I will see you guys later.